and welcome to the U.S. Open of Handball. My name is Dave Vincent alongside Dave Fink. Megan Mihilos up against Courtney Bichot. My name is Dave Vince. Dave Vincent here as we uh, get ready for this match. Courtney Bichot hasn't been on the show court for many years now, Dave Fink. Well, she's been out of the game for about two years. Just started playing Zero about two weeks one. ago to prepare for this tournament and had a very big win early this morning against Pauline Gallagher. I think a lot of people are expecting Pauline to win that match because of Courtney's inactivity. Point. But Dave, Courtney got off to a very slow start this morning, lost the first game 21-10 one one. after trailing 15-0, to zero, and then made Jordan. some of the most incredibly clutch shots under pressure in the second, second game when serve. she was down 19-17. to 17. Just two points from being knocked out of this tournament. Made some great gets, and then a couple of brilliant kill shots to force the tiebreaker, and then she just dominated that tiebreaker. Point. And now she's off to a good start, but you have to think, Dave, it'll be very difficult for Courtney more so than any of these Two other ladies one. to bounce back on the same day just three hours later after Short. a tiebreaker win having not played much handball. And don't forget, Dave, she is playing Second against her serve. arch nemesis, a girl that she's never beat before, even at her very best, Megan Mihilos. And Megan, Dave, as usual, looks very, very focused. Well, that's the thing about Megan is she is just unbelievably professional about how she goes about her approach and she has that kill shot slide in out. the front court side out she goes back in to serve here Megan is the reigning champion One at the US Open two. 2006 Courtney Pichot was in the finals and lost to Anna Engel here at this tournament and that should be a technical Hold it. replay Megan Mihilos' goggles come off and we are replaying the action here Our the first time is, is actually not a technical Megan. Okay, now listen here. You know, if that happens again, it'll be a technical because you have to have a strap on your glasses, but it probably won't happen again. You got a strap handy? Okay. This time is a out. Equipment timeout, actually, and gives us a chance to talk a little bit more about these yeah. players, Dave. You time out for getting your glasses, not a timeout. Megan. She, her glasses Dave, came very off. much like Paul Brady, she only enters about one or two tournaments a year, and she really just focuses so intently on those events that she enters. And when she comes here, Dave, she's really all business. You see a lot of the other players are sort of part of the circus that's traveling around the country and even the world, and one tournament leads into another, and you never really have a chance to really set those goals like you would if you were just playing one or two tournaments a year. And Megan has that kind of singular focus as opposed to you know, Tracy Davis, Dave, who's playing in the one-wall nationals, the three-wall nationals, the world championships, the Simple Green U.S. Open, Tucson next week. You know, her, her training, you Dave, do it. <laughs> is more trying to maintain and more trying to keep the level that she has, and Megan's just trying to peak for these big events. Courtney Pichot completely out of rhythm now, wondering what's going on here, but referee's doing the right thing by telling Megan Mihilos that she has to get her straps on for her goggles because the next one's actually going to be called a technical and then the referee could actually forfeit her from the tournament if it happened again after declining to put on these croquis. There's a lot of threats of players being forfeited here, Dave. Well, Watch. they play by the, the, okay, the rule book here. Okay, time's in. Hmm. New referee, same match. The referee was actually one serves two. He was in there for three points until he got fired. That's the shortest referee stint I've ever seen, Dave. Megan goes Abe Montillo on us and takes a setup and hits it three wall. Referee, point. referee gets the bounce after the three points, but he called the, he's the only ref that would two actually all. say that rule correctly, where if your goggles came off, you ask him to put the, uh, uh, the, the strap on, you're going to get another technical. He's the only one we've seen out of doing 2,000 matches that actually called it correctly, and he gets bounced out of the booth. That's not fair. Well, I actually believe, Dave, that Mr. Wicker is the Three, best referee two. in the business. And I think these ladies would have been very fortunate had he stayed in the box. And, Dave, now that he's gone, we can. <laughs> <laughs> he has good hearing, though, I'll tell mm. you that. Megan Mahilos now at 4-2, to two, game one of the women's semifinals. Four, two. Mihilos and Courtney Bichot. Dan Armijo is our referee. And Dave, that was a big win for Courtney earlier today for her bank account because the semifinalists here at the U.S. Open, Dave, are very, very well paid. Courtney will go home with 
some nice spending money. I'd say she could put it towards her rent, but maybe she'll put it towards some other things. I find it odd that five serves two players were able to not even have to win. Point. They could just enter the tournament and, and get five hundred dollars. I think there should be a rule against that in some sense that you have Six, to two. you have to actually win around it to get money. You can't just come in and lose and, and make money. It doesn't seem like that's fair, although maybe it is. I'm sure somebody can give me an analogy where, you know, well, it, you know, Barack for, Obama's been losing for four years and he's still making money. So, well, for example, the the players at the Grand Slams, Dave, in tennis that qualify to enter the event are given twenty thousand dollars for losing in the first round. But, but then they again, qualify. they've had to qualify by entering, by being in that top one hundred. Now you could say that the women who got buys here have earned the right to have those buys. You know, Courtney Pichot has earned the right through eight past two. wins to be seated into that round of eight. Whereas mm -hmm. someone like Sabrina Zamora, who would have had to win a round to earn money, hasn't earned that right. Nine but I agree with two. you, Dave. I, I don't believe, Dave, that in this structure, the players should get paid just for entering. Well, Sabrina Zamora, has entered more handball professional events in the last year other than Ashley Moeller. Mm. And you some could make the argument that she deserves Side it out. more to get that higher seed than somebody who hasn't played in two years because of a shoulder problem. But two nine. The tournament directors could look at this and say, we give all past no. finalists first come and when it comes to those deciding tiebreakers of who's going to get the four or five seed or the six or seven. Maybe Courtney Pichot got a little love from some of her past performances here. Side out. Well, Courtney's had a very nice career thus far, which she took a sabbatical from, but she Nine is a multiple-time national champion. She's won the doubles with Anna Angle on several occasions. She's been in the national final. She's been in the Simple Green U.S. Open finals. Almost like Dave, a Kim Kleisters that came back to tennis two. after taking two years off and didn't have the ranking but still had the respect. But Megan Mihilos, Dave, is like a Serena Williams who just comes to dominate. And Dave, she hasn't lost a women's match Boy. in two years. Megan Mihilos. Last year, she defeated Ashling Riley. Didn't play in any other pro event. She won the three wall nationals this Time year. Out. You have to go all the way back, Dave, to 2010 to find the last time that Megan Mihilos lost a women's match. Well, Megan was invited to play on the WPH elite team in Ireland this year. And certainly, she would have been given probably a three seater around there, maybe three or four. And she declined that offer because she's a school teacher and it's very difficult to leave for extended amounts of time, if she would have actually had the actual schedule that the women played in, she could have probably made the trip. But the first indications of that printed out schedule showed that Megan would have had to been there a day earlier and a day later than what actually really happened, and then therefore she could have actually probably made the trip. Which well, the is schedule actually changed, I believe, Dave, about six times while the event was taking place. That's true. But I would love, Dave, to see Megan against Fiona Shannon or Maria Daly or Katrina Casey or any of those other top Irish players. It would be a really interesting matchup with any of those players. Megan's style, Dave, very methodical. That Lake Forest percentage handball against the machines from Ireland. And really, that's how they play handball, Dave. They have a system. And we'll see that later today with Ashling Riley. You see it with Paul Brady, but almost, Dave, like one of your computer programs. It's a system, and they follow it. As we're back in here after that timeout, that's a miss hit from Megan, but it might be too close to that side wall for Courtney. Megan gets side out. handcuffed. Uh, Courtney. Good Hit rally. a couple balls in that rally really hard. The last one just a little bit too much for Megan to handle. No. 
Second. Our referee, Dave Dan, the hand Armijo, 50 years young and coming off a world championship at Ireland. He was the first American to capture a title. The youngest American. 311. That's true. That's in the in the age wall, groups. In the four wall events, of course. They had one wall at the world championships? I heard they did. <laughs> well, I sat and watched it. Hmm. Hours I, and hours. I watched Hold it. the one Replay. wall national finals. Small ball, Dave. It started at 12.30 a.m. And it ended at 2.15 a.m. I think, Dave, they're thinking about starting the Super Bowl next year after midnight. I think it would be more fun that way. Mm. Well, they're Somniac's holding it in New like, Orleans, so. Well, Insomniac's like yourself would love it. Well, New Orleans, that's when things pick up, and that's where they're holding the Super Bowl, I believe. Oh, that's unfortunate. Well, that community needs, they need those games. Well, New Orleans, Dave, is one wow. of those spots that's just pretty much a natural disaster waiting to happen. I mean, I don't know why you would build a city on a swamp that's prone to multiple hurricanes 12, per three. year. That's 15 feet below sea level. <laughs> Makes <laughs> sense. That was a beautiful shot to get the side out from Mega Mahilos, who just rolled it out from deep. Courtney Point. doing everything she can to fight these balls off from Megan, but unable to execute there. 13-3. It's nice, though, Dave, to have Courtney back in the mix. She's one of the foils in the women's game that really adds to the competition. And we haven't yet seen her signature move, Dave, where she dives and ends up on her back with her feet facing the front wall somehow. It's, I don't know if you'd call it aerobic or athletic. I'm not sure what the right word is, but it's original. Courtney keeping this drive going here as Megan's going to take a little off. Point. Courtney looks like she's got a calf injury there. I agree. She seemed to be favoring an ankle, Dave, or an Achilles type thing, but maybe just a little bit wrong footed there. She tried to burst forward. Three. Short. It's Dave, the women's afternoon here at the U.S. Open. It'll be the men's doubles evening as Desi Keegan Second serve. and his partner, Joe McCann, took out Armando Ortiz and Chip Morales in two games. A little bit of a surprise there, even though they were the number two seeds. And they'll be taking on, Dave, I believe, Nadia Alvarado Jr. and Tati Silvera. I believe so. Should be a very interesting match. And of course, you've got Marcos Chavez and Vince Munoz. 15-3. Also in action in the semifinals. No, short. Second. Luis Moreno, Dave, in disguise now, walking around the, this club with huge Point. sunglasses and a hat. I really didn't recognize him, Dave, and that's because of the fame. 16-3. That he's gained, Dave, over the last couple of years and particularly in the last couple of weeks. He's one of these guys, Dave, that just wants to focus on the competition and he knows if he's not in disguise, he'll literally have to talk to every person in this club, sign <laughs> autographs, take pictures, kiss babies. And Side out. don't get me wrong, Dave, Luis is one of the sweetest guys you could meet, but at a tournament, he's trying to focus. He's trying to get his first major singles title. 316. Courtney Side unfortunate out. there, but Dave, Megan, much like the now defunct Office Depot taking care of business here in the women's semifinal. It's interesting, Dave, the women are 16, playing two three. matches within five hours, and then they'll have tomorrow off, and they'll come back on Sunday and play the finals at 9 a.m. So it's, it's something we Point. haven't seen before, but that's all to make way for the big ball 
Saturday fiesta tomorrow that's going to kick off at 11 a.m. And that's going to be time. very interesting. We're going to cover all of that with our cameras. They're going to have a mariachi band out here all day mm. tomorrow, too, which is going to be interesting. We always like that. Three. You heard the score of 18 to 3, and no. there's a short ball. Referee says no. Second. No argument from these, these women pros here as Megan Mihilos is just really technically sound, Dave. Well, you see that perfect two-wall scoop shot off the back wall. Most players, Dave, would either miss that or just give you a huge setup. She puts it into a spot 19, that three. Courtney can't even keep the rally alive. Point. And look at Megan, Dave, drop down to one knee. Her back knee is parallel with the ground as she executes that back wall right corner kill. Surprising, Dave, that you don't see more players using the corners on the back wall kills because it is effective. Game one. And we're going to take a break five here. Minutes. We'll be back in five minutes. Stick around for game number two of the women's semifinals in uh, Fountain Valley, California. At shelters, you'll discover healthy and loving animals just waiting to become a part of your family. Why wait? You can make a difference in the life of an animal. A person is the best thing to happen to a shelter pet. Be that person and adopt your new best friend today. To find out more, visit the shelterpetproject.org. Working and working out takes a lot of energy. That's why I drink Zenergy. Feeling fantastic and looking good has never been easier. Science, extreme science for your active lifestyle. My name is Bruce Fabrizio. In 1975, I invented Simple Green based on three principles. It had to be safer to use, it had to work, and it had to be completely made in America. From generation to generation, Simple Green has been cleaning everything from car engines and tools to kitchen counters and floors. No matter what you clean, indoors or outdoors, clean it with non-toxic, biodegradable Simple Green. Here we go. We're going we're gonna to make some juice. It's going to be good. She's excited. A little bit of kale. Please don't put this on line. I'm putting it all over the line. It's wet. It needs something. No, it'll go. Don't break my juicer. Looks good. You ready to try it? Come on, baby. Try Challenge it. your kids to be active and eat healthy. It's okay. okay. Like it. right. They might surprise you. I actually took another sip. You saw it? Search We Can for more ideas on how you and your kids can get healthy together. Rethink what you know about this Vegas icon. your expectations at the Stratosphere Hotel, Casino, and Tower. See what's new, up, down, and all around. Are you getting this, honey? Oh, prime time. We are rolling. <laughs> Challenge your kids to be active and eat healthy. All right, let's see what you can do. Let's go. They might surprise you. Search We Can for more ideas on how you and your kids can get healthy together. My life is full of statistics. Thing is, I could have dropped out of school and become one myself, but I didn't because I had people that believed in me. Here's another statistic. 7,000 students drop out every school day. That's one every 26 seconds. It's time that students know that we believe in them. Inspire a student and share your message of support at boostup.org. My name is Bruce Fabrizio. In 1975, I invented Simple Green based on three principles. It had to be safer to use, 
It had to work, and it had to be completely made in America. From generation to generation, Simple Green has been cleaning everything from car engines and tools to kitchen counters and floors. No matter what you clean, indoors or outdoors, clean it with non-toxic, biodegradable Simple Green. Courtney Pichot, and now Courtney Pichot jumping off to a 1-0 lead here as Megan makes a rare unforced error to start this second game. Megan made very few errors in game number one. In fact, only four unforced errors, already two unforced errors here in game number two. Courtney will need to get off to a very good start here. Try and somehow take Megan out of her game hope that Megan's level drops a little bit and that time Courtney Side out. missed playing a reverse. Zero two. Courtney had the right idea there paddling the kill down the left but she left it up and Megan was in a good position and Courtney just sort of out of sorts there as she One, is two, unable two. to make the pickup. No. Second serve. Megan, not flashy, but just so effective. Point. She doesn't have the unbelievable power of two all. Ashling Riley or those amazing kill shots like Maria Daly, but she just gives you a steady dose of percentage handball and consistency and making the right shots at the right time. And there's an example of it there. Is she has an opportunity from about 30 feet, but recognizes that Courtney is behind her, Three and she two. shoots the right corner and rolls the ball nearly flat. And Courtney it's with down. a very nice shot there. Two, three. Courtney, very much like her brother, has a tendency to just want to no. rally and not try to end rallies when she Second has opportunities. Serve. She has two good hands and she can execute kill shots with both hands, but sometimes she gets away from that and just tries to extend rallies. Side out. Three, two. Welcoming back Dave Vincent here. Dave, as you can see, it's Megan Mihilos with an early lead here. Courtney got two quick points behind Megan Ayers, but now it's looking very much like game two. number one as Megan has scored now four straight points on a combination of kill shots and Courtney Pichot Ayers. Well, it's very difficult to take two years off from the sport and still have strong legs to play back-to-back -back quarterfinal and semifinal matches in one day. I'll try to take nine years off then. take 20 years off then if we're going to keep doing that. Hmm. I was actually referencing. I know what you were doing. Actually, I'll be taking the next 50 off if you want to actually keep score. Well, then I guess you won't have to worry about your legs. Because first of all, you never win a quarterfinal match mm -hmm. and have to play Five, semis in the same two. day. Good point. 5-2 to two is the score. Mega Mahilos serving to Courtney Bichot here. We almost saw that signature dive from Courtney, Point. but well, this match won't be complete with with at least without at least one of those. Six two. Six serves two score now. Courtney telling me, Dave, that she brought her entire team with her here: her physio, her coach, her masseuse. She said, you know, having not played in so long, I'm going to need every advantage I can get. She was actually getting rubbed down between games here. 7-2. Her coach, Dave, trying to give her a couple of pieces of advice to 
enable her to work her way back, Dave. But, and there was almost a dive, but Dave, sometimes all the coaching and the physio trainers and the masseuse just can't make up for having to play back-to-back -back matches within three hours. Megan Dave is one of those players that really doesn't travel with a big entourage. You see a lot of the top players, Dave, with an entourage that literally needs three cars to get to nice. dinner. <laughs> Megan just travels with her mom, who also serves as her Two coach. Eight. But Megan says, you know, I really don't like to get a lot of advice during matches. Sometimes my mom will remind me to sneak a serve down the right. But for the most part, I like to figure things out on my own. She's kind of old school in that way, Dave. And you see a lot of the, the top players now who are new school. Uh, no. I mean, Andy Nett, Dave, There's actually no has to rent them. a bus when he gets to I the airport for balance. his entire team. Of course, Andy travels with a, a hairstylist, a masseuse, a physio trainer, a photographer, a biographer. <laughs> Short. Second, sir. And of course, a videographer. Dave, there's actually a, a documentary being made about Andy Nett and his double life. And you know, a lot of times, Dave, Side out. there's a negative connotation to a double life, but in this instance, it's not. He's a pro handball player, and he's also a professional Eight, model. Three. So he has to balance both of those. He says, you know, handball does come first, though. I mean, I've turned down huge Side projects out. in Milan, New York City even Miami to play in these events. Three eight. And I I know there'll always be other three eight. other events for me to shoot and other opportunities to make that money, but for now I'm committed to handball. Well he said to me and he pointed at his face when he said this, he goes, I'm always gonna have this. That summed it up as we get back into play. Well, what Andy has, Dave, not only the looks now, but he's got the genetics. I don't know if you've Seth. ever seen his father, Point. Dave, but he's Strikingly handsome. Four eight. Really from almost the Jack Wagner mold. Point. A guy whose face, Dave, just continues Five, eight. to light up a room. Five to eight is the score. Courtney in the front court is dangerous. But Megan in the back court is equally as dangerous. Well, Dave, Courtney very much like her brother, has a tendency to want to rally rather than going for the kill. And just like her brother, she has two good hands. You'd almost like to see her shoot the ball a little bit more, even Eight from the back five. court. Particularly when your fitness isn't as good as you'd like it to be, you want to try and shorten rallies. Courtney's finding herself in a lot of 15 plus shot rallies, and that's Megan's forte. And Megan also, I believe, a little bit fitter than Courtney here today. Point. Unfortunate, Dave, actually, for Courtney, who's played Megan so many times, and I know she's taken two years off, but Nine, five. she and Megan have faced each other 12 times, including their collegiate matchups and also professional matchups. Would have liked for Courtney to have been able to mix it up with Ashling Riley and kind of get a feel for what Ten, it's like five. to be in there with the top Irish player and the current world champion. Side out. Five ten. I believe, Dave, that the loser of this Point. match will play off for third place. Maybe we're getting a little bit ahead of ourselves here, but I've already etched Megan's name into my wooden Six, draw. So there's really no turning back at this point. But it looks like it'll probably be Courtney and Tracy Davis, Dave. And I know you know what happens every time those two hook up. It's an 11-10 tiebreaker. You can pretty much put that in the books. Side out. This is game two after 
10-6. Megan Mihilis won the first one. Courtney holding pretty close here to Megan. But that's the way it's always been between Side these out. two. Well, generally, Dave, from what I've seen, when these two match up, there's usually one game that's really close and one that's not so close. And we saw the game that wasn't Six, so close ten. in game number one. And but perhaps, Dave, we'll see Courtney make a run here at this second game, maybe even force a tiebreaker. Over. As you know. Oh, sorry. Bad call. Point. Oh, and Dan, the hand changes his call, Dave. You see the pack gallery there. Dave, they Seven, gave him a hard time. Ten. Dan Armijo changing his call. You don't see referees do that very often. No complaint from Megan. And Megan telling me earlier today, Dave, that Side out. even when she knows the referees made a terrible call against her, she's not going to react because she wants to stay in that ten zone. Seven. She said in the past she might have reacted, and then she finds that she's completely lost her concentration. And she said, you know, I'd rather just take that one bad call rather than making it into five or six bad points in a row for me. And that's a lot of 11, maturity, seven. Dave. 11 serves seven. I don't know, Dave. If, I like that approach, though, Dave. If, if we have footage, Dave, of the Megan Mahilo's press conference from yesterday, Dave, but she really had a lot of interesting things to say. She not only trains, Dave, three hours a day, Side out. And five hours a day on the weekends. But she also does a lot of mental training. She reads a lot of books. She said she really likes the inner game of tennis. She said she's read that now 10 times. Well, you play both. S second serve. You look at tennis and say there's so many similarities that people don't even realize? Well, the big difference, Dave, between tennis and four-ball handball, I believe, is that in tennis you're always 80 feet away from your opponent. So you don't feel your opponent the way you do in handball. In handball, you're inside the box. And a lot of times, you're either making slight contact with your opponent or they're within a foot of you. And I believe, Dave, it really out. adds to the intensity. And it really, it puts your mind almost in a different state. 11-7. Almost more confrontational and combative. Now, not everyone certainly would feel that way, but. I feel like that's a big difference between the two sports. Well, there's certainly a lot to say about that because you can use your positioning to block out a player unintentionally slash intentionally, but you can't do that in tennis because you're in control of your own domain where in the area that you're standing. So well, certainly there's a lot of that involved, which seems sort of like boxing in a lot of ways. Right. I, I think handball is the closest thing to boxing. 13-7. You know, in handball, you don't have your personal space necessarily during the rallies. In tennis, you always have your personal space. But as far as the psychology of the two games, it is very similar because you have opponents that are in your head, and it's always one-on-one -on -one when you're obviously playing singles. And then you have opponent whose head you might be in. Plus, certain opponents are bigger than others, and they're blocking moving targets that are blocking you. Hard to see. Over. see. You see there's a little congestion right there in tennis that obviously never happens, but. There's also, Dave, more reaction time in tennis. Although the ball is hit harder, you're farther away from your opponent and you have more time to react. Whereas in handball, a lot of the times, Dave, you have just a split second to react. As Seven, thirteen. ball may be hit right at your feet from 20 feet away. No. Second. Something about handball, Dave, I feel directly affects your ego more than tennis, perhaps because you're just using your hands. As you see a beautiful Point. shot from Courtney in the right corner. And her team trying to get behind her, Dave, to make a push Eight here 13. in this second game. Point. Courtney has that unorthodox swing, Dave, where her hitting line is actually straight, as you see right there. Most players, Dave, have their elbow bent and then snap into the ball, but Courtney 
starts with her arm straight and then snaps the wrist, so it's not quite a big ball swing. Point. And it's not quite an Irish whip. Timeout. And it's also not a Lenning whip. It's a. It's a what? It's a Peshot stiff arm. Okay. But you see that they're only. Peshot is only three points behind Mahilas at this moment. I can see why the timeout's being called. As we are in game number two of the U.S. Open of handball, brought to you by Simple Green. My name is Dave Vincent, alongside Dave Fink. Courtney Pachot making a comeback after a two-year layoff because of a rotator cuff slash humerus muscle strain in her shoulder. And Megan Mahilis has just been dominating since Courtney was on top of her game during that time. And Dave, Courtney can hit a kill shot from 38 feet, but she can't throw the towel up to the referee. That's actually part of John Robles' PowerPoint presentation, Dave, how to get that towel up to the referee yeah. when he's perched up top. You actually want to twirl the towel in your hand and throw it up with one hand with your strong hand and use your legs. It's not just an arm motion, Dave. You actually have to bend, push up, and lift and release. So sort of similar to the bend and snap from one of your favorite movies, Legally Blonde. <laughs> How did you even know that? Well, you told me that Reese Witherspoon was your favorite actress Point. of all time, and you said, you have to watch this movie. And I went out and I watched it. 11-13. You know, I'm, I may not think she's the greatest actor in the history of television and movies, Side but out. she's certainly a good one. I mean, I can't completely disagree with you. We all like who we like. 13-11. Courtney does well to stay with that serve that hit every wall on the court. And that's the kind of shot that I'd Side like out. to see Courtney going for more. She has a very good overhand kill shot. 11-13. Well, it's, it's as if Courtney's found something here. She couldn't find it on that 13, serve. 13-11. Earlier it was Michael Griggin and, and Coonan defeating John Bike and Waddy Dog mm -hmm. in the tiebreaker 11 to 9. So they wow. will face 11, Vince Munoz and Carlos Chavez, excuse me, Marco Chavez. And earlier, Marcos and Vince were down 0 to 8 in a tiebreaker versus Vic Check Perez it. and Nikolai Nahorniak, and they came back and won 11 to 8. Well, so they Vic will be Perez in the semifinals. And Nahorniak nearly lost in their first round last night to no. Eddie Silvera and Miles Payne winning two very close games, 21-18, 21-20. And Dave, this doesn't come as a surprise to you or I who knew that there was legitimately eight teams who could win this doubles competition. And that's why you see so many close matches as Courtney with just a terrible air there. But Dave, we're gonna have an opportunity to watch those doubles semifinals. And don't forget, Dave, it'll be those guys 13, taking the court just a couple hours after winning two and a half plus hour matches and emotional tiebreakers. Now in the bottom half, Dave, it was smoother sailing for Nadia Alvarado and Tati Silveras. They won in two games, as did their opponents, Desi Keegan and Jarek Poonen, also 14, winning in two 11. games. So you might see the bottom bracket a little bit fresher. The top bracket, Dave, could very well be a little bit spent. And Dave, I love how Megan Mihilos drops that back knee parallel with the floor and drills that shot into the right corner. 15-11. I also love that our little girl grew up and Courtney dove for a ball and and it looked normal. Hmm. You missed it, but it was... No, I actually did see it. I was Time disappointed. Out. Sometimes <laughs> you don't want them to grow up. Like my little son, I want him to stay... Little, little cutie forever.
<laughs> it's great because we can hear, lightly hear the crosstalk between our broadcast band and they also. Talk? Well, you can hear them if you listen closely. I know you. Well, you I can hear them. I just. Yeah. So you're talking about your kid and somebody said, and I'm not going to quote who it is, mm. after you said, I'd love to, you know, that wish that your kid could stay cute forever. And then you hear somebody say, ah, you should see my brother's kid. Mm. Well, perhaps 20 seconds. cell phone pictures <laughs> after the match. <laughs> 16 to 11 is the score here. With Megan Mihilos winning the first one, but now starting to pull away from Courtney Pichot after Courtney was within striking distance, 13 to 11. Courtney's had opportunities here in this game as Megan has not been that sharp. Time's in. Courtney seems to have found her second win, but I can assure you, Dave, she will be extremely sore tomorrow after having not played virtually any handball 16, for two years and to 11. come out and play against two of the top 10 players in the world in just four hours time, she will be feeling it. There's a swing and a miss right there. Well, what's great 17, about handball, Dave, 11. is sometimes you can swing and miss and still have an opportunity to keep the rally alive if the ball comes off the back wall. Can't do that in tennis, so there's another thing. Well, actually, Dave, I swing and miss at quite a few overheads and then still have an opportunity to run back and play them. 18-11. Okay. I thought you were going to say you can't swing and miss in baseball, which would have been correct. Nineteen eleven. Unless you swung and missed and then your follow-through hit the ball <laughs> <laughs> I could behind see that your happening. back. Yeah. With a knuckleball pitcher. So you'd have to be way out way in front ahead, of it. Way, way out of front. <laughs> so you're actually expecting a 100-mile-per-hour <laughs> fastball, and they throw an EFIS ball. Yeah. Okay, and you catch it your on the follow rebound. follow-through, yeah, your yeah. follow-through. Game There match. it is. The game and match going Thank to you. Mega Mahilos taking down Courtney Pichot. We'll have another one coming up right around the corner. In fact, Ashleen Riley, our current world champion, Ooh. up against Tracy Davis next, and that's going to pack the house here. That'll be 3.30. Pacific Standard Time, so we're way ahead on the sh uh, show court here by 45 minutes. I'm not sure if they're going to try to get that on early or just take a timeout because you know certainly that the doubles will, will delay everything until about midnight tonight, so it'd be nice if they were able to schedule that on early. We're going to take a break, though. <laughs> Look how cute that baby is. Our producer, Chris Grad. His twin brother, Justin's baby, is now being featured on our live broadcast here. I know, Dave, you're jealous because you want baby Henry to be on there. Too bad if... <laughs> now, Dave's not on Facebook anymore, so... On it. Hmm. Actually, I was going to go to a break, but I am going to now send a picture. Not is sure it? how you have a picture. Well... I was there during conception. Mm. <laughs> I don't believe you'll find one on there, Dave. I bet you I do. Mm. Well, those pictures, Dave, all before baby Henry came out of the oven. Okay, well, we're going to take a timeout. It's been nice that you've hung around waiting for the picture to be up there. Baby Henry, looks like it's not going to happen. We are going to take a break. We'll have more handball coming up in just a bit. Stay around at racefor8.com. Here we go. We're going we're to make some juice. It's going to be good. She's excited. A little bit of kale. Please don't put this on the line. I'm putting it all over the line. It's wet. It needs something. No, it'll go. Don't break my juicer. Looks good. You ready to try it? Come on, baby. Try. Challenge your kids to be active and eat healthy. It's okay. Okay. Like it. right. They might surprise you. I actually took another sip. You saw it? Search We Can for more ideas on how you and your kids can get healthy together. My life 
It's full of statistics. Thing is, I could have dropped out of school and become one myself, but I didn't because I had people that believed in me. Here's another statistic. 7,000 students drop out every school day. That's one every 26 seconds. It's time that students know that we believe in them. Inspire a student and share your message of support at boostup.org. My name is Bruce Fabrizio. In 1975, I invented Simple Green based on three principles. It had to be safer to use, it had to work, and it had to be completely made in America. From generation to generation, Simple Green has been cleaning everything from car engines and tools to kitchen counters and floors. No matter what you clean, indoors or outdoors, clean it with non-toxic, biodegradable Simple Green. Working and working out takes a lot of energy. That's why I drink Zenergy. Feeling fantastic and looking good has never been easier. Science, extreme science for your active lifestyle. At shelters, you'll discover healthy and loving animals just waiting to become a part of your family. Why wait? You can make a difference in the life of an animal. A person is the best thing to happen to a shelter pet. Be that person and adopt your new best friend today. To find out more, visit theshelterpetproject.org.